Hello, everyone, and welcome to Sunday. This is the Lord's day. This is the day he made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Thanks for joining Jeannie and me for Sunday. Jeannie's got a wonderful song of praise to share with you in just a moment. And today's message is very important for these days in which we're living. It's titled Justice and Judgment. Everybody seems to want justice, but I don't think very many people really understand what a biblical justice looks like. Some even say we deserve justice, but whose justice are they referring to? What does real biblical justice look like? Well, we're going to learn today that justice and judgment go hand in hand, and the church plays a bigger role in administering justice than what you might have thought. So stay tuned. That's coming up in just a few moments. But first, here's Jeannie with a perfect song to lead us in worship. Father, we praise you. If my people call by my name, will humble himself and pray and will seek my face turn from their wicked ways if my people call by my name will humble themselves
Here's Pastor Caldwell with today's message. Thanks, everybody, for joining Jeannie and me for Sunday, our special day to be with you. I always like to minister to people and take the Bible and use it for our reference. Current events, things that are going on right now, difficulties, challenges you might be facing, there's always an answer in the scriptures. So if you're watching right now and you have your Bible, turn with me to Genesis chapter 18. And I want us to look at justice and judgment. These two words are in the news, you might say, uh, quite a bit. And I always like to run references and find out what the Bible has to say about things. In Genesis 18, verse 16, God and Abraham are having a conversation. And God says, shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him. It's very important. I know him, God said, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment. Now, we have an idea that we've gotten from the media, the mainstream media, the secular media, or maybe through politicians or civil government or spokespersons representing certain issues and groups of people. We've been imprinted with an idea of what justice and judgment are all about. But when you look at the scriptures and you compare the biblical reference, much of what we've been told is not correct. Listen to this again. I know Abraham. He'll command his children and his household after him, which means he'll be a model. Um, this is not a commanding uh, surge like a Gestapo is not commanding that way. It means he will model and present himself to his children. He will demonstrate to them. And I know Abraham, I know he'll do this. He will command his children, his household after him. They'll keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment. Before you can have justice and judgment, you have to do justice and judgment. Before you can expect it or claim it or desire it or demand it, you have to do it. You have to do justice and judgment. Why? Here's the purpose, the reason. That the Lord may bring upon Abram, Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. If we want to see the goodness of God, the kindness, the blessings of God, the anointing of God, if we want to see God's miraculous power, if we want to see the manifestation of the presence of God, then we're going to have to do justice and judgment. And I want to say this before I get any further. You might be surprised who God is going to hold accountable for justice and judgment. It's not government. It's not the police. It's not the legislature. It's not Congress. It's the church. You see, Pastor Caldwell, you're always laying all these challenges at the doorstep of the church. That's because that's what the Bible says. The church is Jesus' body in the earth. And the church is supposed to mirror and model everything to this world. Let me read you some interesting statements about justice. Justice is based on intention under moral government and even under civil government. Listen to it again. Justice is based on intention. The Bible respects intention more than results. When the heart is right, God considers all things right. And we're going to read some scriptures here. The Bible says righteousness exalts a nation. Now let's go back to Genesis 18. The first thing that we have to note is the Lord said to himself, 
The Lord said this to himself. I am going to reveal what I'm about to do to Abraham because I know Abraham. Now go with me over to James chapter 2 and let's look at verse 21. James chapter 2 and verse 21. If you have your Bible, follow along with me. James chapter 2, verse 21 through 23. Was not Abraham our father justified by works? Now Abraham was the father of our faith. When he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar, seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. That's why God could say, I know him. I know what Abraham is going to do. I've already seen what Abraham would do. So God said, I'm going to show Abraham what I'm about to do. Of course, he was talking about Sodom and Gomorrah. He was talking about what he was going to present to Sodom and Gomorrah and give them an opportunity to repent so that God could bring upon Abraham that which he had promised. What had he promised? Go over to Romans chapter 4, and we'll find out what God had promised uh, to Abraham. Because that was the whole purpose of even bringing this up uh, to Abraham. Abraham chapter 4, uh, excuse me, Romans chapter 4. Uh, the promise that he would be heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Did you get that? The righteousness of faith. There's a righteousness that comes by faith in Christ Jesus. The righteousness in the Old Testament was by keeping the law. But of course, Jesus said, I have fulfilled the law. So now righteousness is by faith in Jesus Christ. He goes on to say, he said, for uh, if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void, but the promise made of none effect. The law worketh wrath. Where there's no law, where there's, where there's no law, there's no transgression. Uh, Paul had a revelation of this. He said, you know, I didn't know it was wrong to sin until the law said thou shalt not. He gave great credit to the law for showing him what was wrong and what was right. Therefore, it is a faith that it might be by grace to the end that the promise might be sure to all the seed. Now, God intended for everybody, all creation, to enjoy the blessings that he intended to bring upon his people. If you go over to Galatians chapter 3 and we find out how we come into this, of course, we're adopted into the family. Galatians 3, 29, through Jesus Christ. If you be Christ's, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So why did the Lord say, I know Abraham? Because he did know him. He knew exactly what he would do in every situation. And he said, uh, he will command his children and his household after him. They will keep the way of the Lord. See, justice and judgment are not something to be feared. They're not something that can be legislated. They're not something that can be um, commanded or demanded uh, by law. I know we think they are, but justice, I, let me tell you what justice is. Let me, let me define it for you. Here's what the definition of justice is. Rightness, righteousness, moral virtue, <coughs> excuse me, to administer or maintain what is just, impartial, merited awards or punishment conforming to the law. If you go over to um, Romans chapter 13, let's go over there and let's read this. I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but everything seems to be flowing in this direction. Romans chapter 13 
And let's look at verse 1. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. There is no power but of God. The powers that are be, that are, uh, the powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore shall resist the power, resists the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Will then you not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and you'll have praise of the same. For he, the authority, the power ordained of God. If he is the minister of God, he's the minister of God for good. But if you do that which is evil, be afraid, for he bears not the sword in vain. He is the minister of God, a revenger to execute, execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore, you must needs be subject not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. So he's saying here that the law is never going to create a righteous response. Just the fear of the punishment of the law, just the fear of the wrath or the merited or unmerited uh, disposition Dispensation, the, the uh, handing out of uh, awards or punishment. That's never going to change anybody. It says we must learn, listen to this again, we must learn to conduct ourselves for conscience sake. This is why everybody needs to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. The Bible said that God has made of all men, one blood. And in him, we must live and move and have our being. Jesus has to be preached. Jesus has to be modeled. You're always going to have injustice. You're always going to have justice. You're always going to have judgment. You're always going to have these things in life. But what we're after is we're after the biblical definition of what justice is all about. And we can see that the responsibility lies at the hands of the church. Rightness, moral virtue, uh, merited awards or punishment. Uh, let's, let's go back and read some more of these notes on justice. The Bible respects intention, the intent of the heart, more than results. When the heart is right, when the intent of the heart is right, all is considered right. That's why God was talking to Abraham about Sodom and Gomorrah. He said, I don't want to have to destroy these people. I'm going to go down now and see for myself. And if they're willing to repent and they're willing to turn, if the tipping point has not taken place, then they can all, all be saved. And Abraham stood before God for 10 righteous God's looking for right intents of the heart. Let, let me go over here to Genesis chapter 6, and let's look at what the Scripture says. This is, this is so strong, so powerful. Genesis chapter 6, and I always used to wonder about this, but look at Genesis 6 and verse 5. God saw that the wickedness of man was so great in the earth that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. The thoughts and the intent of his heart was only evil. Didn't make any difference how many laws he kept. Didn't, didn't make any difference as how many sacrifices he made. God said the thoughts and intent of his heart is only evil continually. And it says in the language used, it grieved God in his heart that he'd even made man. Now you have to understand that. You have to know the, the character of God. God made man for fellowship. That's, that's really what prayer is. It's fellowship. It's worshiping God. It's spending time with God. God made man for fellowship. He created the universe for the earth. He created the earth for man and he created man for himself made him in his image so we could worship him spirit to spirit. 
you know, <laughs> the Bible says that we worship God in spirit and in truth. So God intended for man to have right thoughts. God intended for man to govern himself. You heard that colloquial expression, let your conscience be your guide. Well, that's only good and true if you have a right conscience, if you have a rightness with God, a righteousness with God. And the only way you can get that is through Jesus Christ. So you have to know Jesus. What do you think this world would be like, our culture would be like, if everybody in the country knew Jesus? If everybody respected Jesus, you would automatically respect each other. You would automatically love each, each other. Well, that's what it says in Romans. In him we live and move and, excuse me, acts. In him we live and move and have our being. Okay, let's, let's go on to another one. Let's go over to Romans chapter 1. And let's, let's look at verse, let's say Romans chapter 1, verse 28. Let's look at Romans 1, 28. Even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. And then he lists all the things that people were doing in that time. And God gave them over to a reprobate mind because they did not want to retain God in their knowledge. Back to Genesis 6, 5 that we read just a minute ago. It said God, it grieved him that people, uh, the thoughts and the intents of their heart was evil only continuously. Think about it. Now we only, we don't have, <laughs> well, I guess some people would say we have it continuously, but uh, we don't really. And I, I want you to notice that. Let me read one more scripture and, and then we're going to pray. In Hebrews uh, chapter 4, verse 12, the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, the joints of the marrow, and is a discerner and the thoughts and intents of the heart. Uh, the Bible respects intention more than results. When the heart is right, and the Bible says, righteousness exalts a nation. So what we've got to have is justice and judgment, Bible style. And church, it's our responsibility to start it off, to model it. Now I want to pray. There's a, a prayer request here. And it's always a, a, a joy and a privilege to pray for you. And uh, we recently received this prayer request from a viewer. And I think maybe some of you can probably identify with this. Um, I'm going through a time of bad depression. I've had this for some time and I've taken med medication that helped for a while, but I need prayer. The joy is gone and I'm very sad. I want to pray for you. And there might be others out there that are watching right now. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Now I'm going to pray deliverance over you first of all. So if you're watching right now, or if you need prayer in this area, I want you to just stretch out your hands towards the TV set. And I want you to say, in the name of Jesus, that's right, repeat it after me, in the name of Jesus, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Therefore, sadness and depression, leave me now. Loose me and let me go. Now, Father, I join with my brother and sister and I come against that depression and that oppression and sadness, and I command it to go in the name of Jesus. You loose them now and let them go. Amen. Now, I pray for the Holy Spirit and the joy of the Lord to come on the inside of you and you begin to rejoice and leap for joy. That's what the Bible says. Leap for joy. I know it sounds stupid, but I've had to do it. I've done it. You just start leaping, jumping for joy and begin to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for allowing us to pray for you. And always remember, we're here to pray and stand in agreement with you. Email me at prayer at vtntv.com or call 1-800-264-2525.
Now, don't go anywhere. I'll be right back right after this. Scripture tells us that perilous times will come, but we are not to be troubled by them. Pastor Happy Caldwell reveals how to live in victory regardless of circumstances or what the news reports are saying by knowing God's promises of provision and protection and releasing your faith to receive. Those who know the Lord and learn to follow after the peace in their heart can avoid trouble. By faith, you can rise above the faulty world system and prosper with the favor of God. To order your copy of How to Thrive in Perilous Times by Pastor Caldwell for $5 plus shipping, call 1-800-264-2525 and ask for offer number 14009. You can also order your copy online at www.vtntv.com. Get your copy of How to Thrive in Perilous Times today. It'll help you. And remember, VTN's on Facebook. You can find us at VTN on your Arkansas Christian Connection. You can also follow me on Twitter, happy underscore Caldwell. And be sure and join Jeannie and me next Sunday at this same time. And remember, happy is the man that finds wisdom and the man that gets understanding. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. If this program has ministered to you, please consider making VTN part of your regular giving. To make a donation or to contact this ministry, write to VTN, P.O. Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72221. You may also call 501-223-2525. Today's program is available to watch on demand. Log on to VTNTV.com and click Watch. VTN is also on Roku. Search VTN in the channel store and add us to your lineup. You may also order a copy of today's show on DVD by calling 1-800-264-2525. Ask for the offer number on the screen. And join us again next time for Sunday with Happy and Jeannie Caldwell.